Okay, welcome to the week 15 of our forensic photography. So the topic for today is all about the procedure in photographing the crime scene, the long-range view, the mid-range view, the close-up view, and the extreme close-up view. So isa isa na natin. So this is the formal discussion about the procedures on how you will conduct the crime scene photography inside the uh, crime scene. Okay, so first, what are the objectives of crime scene photography? So, ano nga ba ang objectives? Bakit tayo merong crime scene photography? As we all know, crime scene, this is the place where the crime was perpetrated and physical evidence found there at. So, kung saan nangyari ang crime, when we're talking about the location where the crime happened, we're talking about the crime scene. Okay, what are the objectives of having photography in crime scene? Number one is to produce a pictorial record of everything regarding the crime. So, it will, sabi nga natin, it will use as the best record or the best uh, documenting evidence when it comes to a crime. So, to help in keeping the police officer's memory accurately as possible as, as to where he find things. Another thing uh, na objective ng crime scene photography is to help yung ating mga police officer, mga investigator. Kasi, hindi naman madaling tandaan yung mga bagay-bagay kung saan nakalagay. So, through the help of this photography, agad-agad record natin kung saan nga ba nakita ng isang police officer or ng investigator yung isang evidence. To help in securing or obtaining confession, description, and information to the case. Yes, of course, kapag nakita kasi nila yan, oh, ito yung krimen, ito yung nakita yung kutsilyo dito, to. Nakita nila yung baril mo dito. So, sometimes, papakita lang nila yon as an evidence. Then, therefore, habang nagkakaroon sila ng interrogation with their suspects or yung mismong offender, nagkakaroon sila ng confession or sometimes um, doon na nalalaman ang totoo. Kumakanta na sila. Yan. Importance of crime scene photography, number one, syempre, for identifi identification of persons, documents, fingerprints, shoe prints, and splashes of the blood. All the things that we have seen in the crime scene. Preservation of evidence in court, especially to those evidences that are perishable or yung madaling masira. So, katulad ng blood na natutuyo, yung mga abangkay mismo, diba? yung mga kung ano mang liquid yan. Describe better than words. Yes, it is it is always better na magkaroon ng photograph. Di ba, kunwari, uh, ikukwento mo, mas maganda na nakikita mo kesa kinakwento lang nila. Yan. It proves a statement and it record things once you may fail to notings, yeah, notice. Yan. Note, ano yung pinaka-note? Upon arrival at the crime scene, you need to photograph the whole area before anything is moved. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, as a forensic photographer, kayong unang papasok, kayo din ang huling papasok. And a general rule, do not touch or do not move things unless they are already documented by the use of photography. So, take shots from different angles to show the whole area. That is the very golden rule when it comes to crime scene photography or when it comes in processing the crime the crime scene kailangan do not touch do not move unless it is already documented by photography or sometimes by the sketch yan para hindi nasisira yung ating crime scene SOP what are the SOPs in crime scene photography SOP these are the standard operating procedures in crime scene photography number 1 we need to obtain photographs of crime scene early in the investigation Preferably before anything has been moved. Yun nga. Kailangan kayo yung unang papasok para i-photograph lahat. Pero, bawal kayo na maggalaw. Pipicturean nyo lang. Next, photograph from several angles so the proper dimensions may be shown. Madaming techniques dyan kung paano nyo makukuha. Da dyan papasok yung ating general view, mid-range view, at yung close-up view. When dimensions are important, use some sort of scale. Ayan, kaya lagi tayo may mga measuring devices, ruler, uh, metros, or uh, measuring tape, and the photograph so that the enlargement or reduction may be measured. Kasi diba sa picture, magbumuka lang siyang maliit without the use of uh, measuring devices. So, para mapakita natin yung real Okay? Yung real size ng isang bagay or ng isang evidence, kailangan gumamit tayo ng tape measure or mga measuring devices to prove its length or size. Record in your note data concerning the photographs, including directions and distances from principal objects in the crime scene sketches may be also helpful. Ayan. 
pwede rin na maglagay kayo ng directions. Kaya nga sa sketch, ba diba, uh, meron, lagi natin nilalagay yung north sa taas para alam nila kung saan papunta yung north. Yan. For special equipment, call on the laboratory. Yung mga techniques, kanwari, kailangan ng oblique light, kailangan ng laser, kailangan ng mga luminol, kailangan tatawag kayo sa ating laboratory. Yan. So, these are the guidelines in taking photographs of a crime scene. Number one, establish shot. Establish shot, this is an overall view from extreme to the other. It shows where we are, a busy intersection, a farm, residential, area, an airport, a factory, or even at the middle of the jungle. Establish shot, para itong general view, they will establish the location of the crime scene. Uh, kadalasan, ginagawa natin is overlapping. Mamaya, i-explain ko sa inyo yung overlapping na yan. So, para siyang panorama, para lang makuha mo yung buo kung saan yung pinaka uh, location ng isang crime scene, kailangan natin tatawag na establish shot. Next, the building. Yan, the building. The next photograph should show the building in which the crime was committed. So, after mong pinakita yung mga bagay-bagay or near, uh, the things near in the crime scene, kailangan ang i-focus mo niyan yung mismong building kung saan, kung indoor man ang iyong crime, ha? Uh, kung saan mo or saan ginawa ang crime. So, the next photograph should show the building in which a crime was committed. So, this shows whether it is a private or home, a factory, a small shop, a hotel, or garage. Usually, two photographs will be needed in the front and back of the building para to establish location lang naman. Next, after Papalapit siya ng papalapit mula sa labas, papasok ng building, papasok na tayo dun sa pinaka-entrance niya. Yan. This is usually the door, but it may be a window sometimes. Siyempre, kung lalo na kung housebreaking robbery or yung pagnanakaw. If there is a gate in the door, take a photograph for one each entrance. Lahat. Lalo na kung pinakalharap, gate muna, kuhanan mo yun bago sila makapasok. Next. Next, afternoon, nasa entrance ka na, ang susunod na guideline mo is the hallway. So, the camera now show us what we would observe immediately after we enter the building. Ito na yung ano ba yung dadaanan mo. Lalo na kung kanwari, a fourth floor yan. Ayan. So, nakapasok ka na sa entrance, nasa first floor ka rang. Ano yung hallway, ma'am? Ito yung did as possible na dinaanan. No, or, pap or, yung, or ito yung daan papunta doon sa mismong room kung saan nangyari ang so, the camera now show us what we would observe immediately after we enter the building. It should show the location of the other doors, ayan, or rooms through which we must pass to get to the room in which the crime was committed. Ito nga sinasabi ko sa iyo, magsimula sa kung fourth floor pa ginawa ang crime. Therefore, magsimula sa pinakailalim, pagkapasok na pagkapasok mo lang, pumupa lang sa building, pipicturean mo na pati yung mga hagdan hanggang sa makapunta ka doon sa pinaka-main room kung saan nakalagay ang crime scene. Yun na tinatawag nating the hallway, yung parang dinadaanan mo papunta doon sa crime scene. Next, the room. This may be a bedroom an office or a bathroom. The most difficult problem is to include the entire area, sometimes like in the building shots. Two photographs from opposite corners will be enough and a wide lens is used. O, kapag naman gusto mong sakupin yung buong, kasi kapag nasa kwarto, kailangan kasi masakup mo yung buong kwarto, ipapakita mo sa kanila. Mamaya, explain ko sa iyo. A wide lens is used to photograph kapag kailangan mong kuhanin yung buo. So, however, the investigator note should also be carefully Mark with the information. Next, after mong pumasok sa loob, na, na picturean mo na yung buong kwarto, papasok ka na sa close-up. Yan. The number and types of close-up photograph that will, of course, depend upon the kind of crime. So, sa close-up, ito na yung mismong evidence natin. So, in general, close-up should be made on, number one, object attack. This may be a person. Yan. Safe cash box or display counter. Ito mga... Uh, na-attack. It's either yung tao, pinarel, pwede rin yung safe cash box, sinira, or display counter. So, the purpose of this picture is to show the amount and kind of damage the method of attack. So, yun ang pinapakita sa close-up, ba? Next, the weapon or tool use, kung hindi man yung mismong uh, 
nabagyan or ginawan ng atake yung ginamit naman nilang mga weapons, yung mga natirang evidences. Kanwari ba there? Kuchilyo. Yan. So, the weapon or tool used. The photographer must be careful here to show a reference point in every picture. It shows which are right, left, up, down, north, and south. So, dito, anong tawag sa view na to para makita yung mga different evidences dito? Ang tawag dyan ay medium view. Next, we also have significant clues. Yeah, this may be a fingerprint, blood stain, footprints, skid marks, tool marks, broken glass, or any other physical evidence. Fingerprint in particular should be photographed after dusting but before lifting. Katulad nung tinuro ko sa inyo last week kung paano mag-picture. Ito yung mga tinuro ko sa inyo last week na kung paano mag-picture ng mga different evidences katulad ng mga yon, yung mga common evidences na yon. Pag nakita nyo sa loob ng crime scene. Yan. So, yun ang ating mga guidelines. Ito naman. This is the duties and responsibilities of crime scene photographer. Kayo. Yan. Kapag nag-graduate kayo ng uh, college, nag-take kayo ng board, ayan, tapos nag-special training kayo for forensic photography, ayan, pwede kayo mag-crime scene photographer. So, as a crime scene photographer, this is your duties and responsibilities. Number one, in responding to SOCO or field laboratory works, request, He should be well equipped with all necessary equipment and materials such as the camera with wide angle, normal lens, tripod, flash unit, floodlight, measuring tools, data board, pencil, and rolls of film. Siyempre, di ba, crime scene photographer ka? At all times, kailangan kumpleto ang iyong gamit bago pumupunta sa isang crime scene. Next, check and ensure the service ability of the of his equipment. Kasi dahil laboratory yan, kanwari, so, ko, madaming pwedeng gumamit na kasamahan mong forensic photography that then, eh, or crime scene photographer. So, you need just to check the serviceability of his equipment, whether available ba sila or hindi. So, responsible in looking after his security as well as his equipment. As a crime scene photographer, dahil yan ang trabaho mo, magpicture ikaw din ang nangangalaga sa mga gamit na meron kayo sa SOCO or laboratory. Next, record the detail of SOCO or Field Laboratory Works responded including the type of camera and film used. Meron kasi tayong photographic log which is gagawin nyo. Okay? Doon nakalagay kung anong klaseng camera ginamit mo, ano yung ISO niya, lahat nakalagay doon. So, after the operation, he should immediately process the exposed film and print the negative for filing and presentation in. Court. So, after mo nilagay sa photographic logs, doon ka na pwedeng mag-present sa korte lahat ng evidences mo na photograph. So, he should strictly observe the procedures applicable in every crime scene to include measurement and case identification. Iba't iba kasi yung procedure depende sa crime na meron sila at saka sa lugar na pinangyarihan ng crime scene. Yan. So, policy. This is the policy during uh, SOCO uh, or Field Laboratory Works. Number one, a crime scene photographer should be always well-equipped. Ito nga yung mga gamit niya. Pang camera, tripod, pati lenses, pati na yung mga measuring tools. Tapos, kasama na dyan yung pencil and some roll of... Uh, pencil, sometimes, ginagamit nila chalk. Yan, nowadays ang ginagamit nila, chalk. Kasi bago nila kuhanin yung isang bagay, kailangan nilang drawingan muna ng chalk para makita yung pinaka, uh, tawag dito, pinaka location ng ating evidence. So, photograph the entire scene or the general view to include nearby surroundings, the address of the crime scene, indicating the case number time, date, and initial of the photographer. So, bago kayo mag-start, mag-picture, syempre, sa labas muna, di ba nga, magsimula kayo sa labas, plus na yung ating case identification number, which is i-discuss ko later on. So, magsimula kasi kayo sa, taa, sa labas, papasok ng papasok sa crime scene. Next, take an overlapping shot or the immediate scene from our from four different angles. So, yung overlapping shot, ito yung kanwari nasa harap ka ng bahay nyo, tapos nasa daan, di ba? Kanwari, ang bahay nyo nasa harap ng daan. Ayan. Paano yung overlapping, ma'am? So, kung yung isa, yung kanan, kunwari, yung kanan yung daan papunta ng Manila, yung kaliwa yung daan papunta naman ng Pampanga, so, ang gagawin mo, from doon sa harap ng bahay nyo, magsusimula ka doon sa left. 
Ayan, pipicturean mo from left na daan hanggang sa gitna ng bahay nyo hanggang sa right, pinaka-right na daanan. Tapos, para ikwento mo na yung the left side dito is going to Pampanga, the right side here is going to uh, Manila. So, ganun ang overlapping shot. Parang ini-establish mo lang yung location nga ng ating crime scene. Usually, nangyari kasi yan doon sa mga mas uh, or indoor type of crime scene. Next. Yan. Photograph the body. Oh, nakapasok ko na. Photograph the body or victim showing the exact location, direction where it ends. In homicide cases, photograph the victim in four different side top views, class of view of the face, won't sustain or with or without skills and any identifying marks if identified. And after the body has been removed, showing the white outline to indicate the place where the victim was found. So, sa mga victim kasi, pag pinipicturean sila, una kung saan sila nakahilata or saan sila nadatnan, tapos pipicturean din sila after nilang nilif or nilipat na yung mismong bangkay. Titingnan kasi nila doon yung mga wounds niya. Yan. Ano yung cause of death niya, di ba? At saka kung saan yung nabuong dugo, kung saan na yung mga nagtumigas na laman, para ma-establish nila kung tinapon lang ba siya doon, di ba? Or doon talaga siya namatay. Yan. So, photograph the entrance exit of the crime scene. Always remember that na lagi nilang pinipicturan ng entrance at saka exit ng crime scene. Probably, ito yung mga windows, ito yung mga pinto. Yan. Yeah, next, photograph the close-up all pieces of evidences around the crime scene with a measuring tool placed side by side. Evidence should be properly labeled with the case number, time and date, and the initial of the photograph. Photographer. Ito yung pinagawa ko sa inyo, di ba? Kaya nga nagpicture kayo ng footwear at saka tayo impressions na meron ng mga measuring devices, pati yung mga evidence number to establish yung locate, location ng ating isang evidence. So, photogra photograph location of bullet hole kung meron man. Crime scene should be sketched, measured, and reflected on the photographic log, indicating the position of the camera, weather condition, type of lens, film, camera, aperture, shutter speed, and shutter speed use. Yan. So, yun na yung mga policy natin during SOCO or kapag nagkakandak na tayo ng ating crime scene photography sa isang specific crime scene. So, These are the following cases wherein kung ano yung mga technique nila kapag ganito yung mga kaso. Suicide case. Ayan. We should not uh, conclude in responding such cases. It needed a thorough examination and investigation. Suicide note should not be photographed. Ayan. Suicide note should not be a phot photograph. Yung mismong laman kahit hindi na masyado. Pero yung kanwari kung saan yan nilagay. Uh, kailangan yung picture niyan. Pero yung pinaka-content, kahit hindi na. Okay? During suicide cases, parang hindi natin siya sinasabi na suicide siya agad. There is a possibility na gagalawin nila yan o ipaprocess nila yan na iniisip nila murder or homicide yan. Next. Suicide by hanging or kanwari, ang ating murder, murder is through hanging. Ito ang gagawin nyo. So, strangulation by hanging is the most common form of suicide. But the investigator must not assume that the victim found hanging is suicide. So, as a photographer nga or as a police officer, hindi mo naman kailangan na i-assume na agad-agad kung may bikti, eh, nagbikti siya, nagpakamatay siya. So, kadalasan, binibi, uh, meron silang kasama kaya sila nabibikti or parang na-pressure sila. So, photograph the subject at a distance from four views showing the full body and the move and in closer and show the knot. Ito. Always remember in suicide by hangin, kailangan pinapakita yung knot ng uh, yung pagkakabuhol ng ating lubid or kung ano man ang ginamit nilang tay. Okay? If it is suicide by shooting, take note of the color of the body. Do not untie the knot, just cut it. Yan. Hindi mo kailangan alisin yung biktima. Okay? makinig, ay nasasakal na siya lilipat na natin yung biktima, huwag mo nga alisin yung pagka ano ng uh, lubed pagkatali niya, puputulin mo siya para mawala siya sa sa leeg niya pero hindi mo sisirain kung paano niya binuhol yung mismong lubed niya Yan. kapag naman daw, if the suicide is by made, made by shooting you need to take note of the color of the body para malaman nila kung Binaril ba talaga siya doon or 
uh, binaril pa siya sa labas. Depende kasi yan eh. Kasi magkakaroon tayo ng discoloration na tinatawag nila yung pamumuo ng dugo sa harap or sa likod kung saan man siya or saan body part man siya uh, na punta nung uh, namatay siya. Kasi namumuo ang dugo doon. Alam na alam nila kung nilipat lang ng posisyon. Yan. So, suicide by shooting photograph both entrance and exit of the wounds. Kung saan pumasok yung barrel, pati yung pagkalabas ng barrel. So, place identification alongside each wound as well as a ruler for measuring the entrance and exit wound. Tatagang sinusukat nila gaano kalaki yung pum pumasok na bala. So, exit, exit wound is always larger than the diameter of the bullet. Usually, the hair surrounding the entrance would be cinched and the skin be burned to regist or graying brown color. Yan. Also, if that shot is fired from range or less than 8 inches, a smeary black residue may be evident. If possible, photograph the close-ups up or close ups or the wounds in color to show this various discoloration. Madami kasing ganyan, mga anak na akala nila suicide, pero ang totoo, meron bumaril sa kanila. Depende kasi talaga doon sa position ng gun nila. Kaya alam nila kung gaano kalayo yung barrel dahil sa residue na napupunta sa mismong balat natin kapag ginamit natin ang barrel. O lalo na kapag tinutok mo yung barrel sa ulo mo. Diba? So, mag magkakaroon niya ng marks. Yan. So, malalaman nila kung suicide ba or um, murder or homicide. Yan. Rubbery case. Ayan, ano naman yung uh, uh, tatandaan natin ka when it comes to rubbery case. So, photograph the general view of the crime scene. Ayan. The point of entry begins with the distant shot and the work yourself through it take close-up shots on the possible entry and exit to include the pathways. Each room in the house or building which was deserved should be photographed. Lahat ng mga entrance or room na parang nabuksan, sinira, kailangan mong i-check yan or picture yan by using a close-up photograph. So, take some shots of all furniture or articles which show us evidence of being a ransack. Ayan, yung pa kung paano magulo. Hindi, dahil, dahil magulo yung crime scene nyo, hindi, di, hindi porket na, kanwari, OC ka, eh, aayusin mo. Kasi pag inayos mo yan, wala na, nasira na yung crime scene mo. Yan. Determine his possible point of exit. Usually, the burglar may leave something at the crime scene, especially when he is surprised by someone such as hat, gloves, scarves, and cigarette butts. Yan. So, kadalasan yung mga burglars or mga magnanakaw, meron silang naiiwan na identity nila. Anwari, hat, gloves, scarf, or cigarette burns. Kung saan man yung entrance or exit ng kanilang pinasukan na crime scene. Next, homicide cases. Ayan. So, when photographing the scene of homicide case, the forensic photographer relates that he or has that he what he has to show, the manner by which the homicide occurred, views of the rooms with all possible entrance and exit. So, he must show whether there is any evidence of struggle and try to show what happened inside prior to the crime. Obvious evidence such as cigarette butts, bloodstains, or broken glass should not be overlooked. Yung mga cigarette butts, uh, bloodstain, hindi mo yun dapat binabaliwala sa mga homicide cases. Kasi baka yan yung maglilink sa ating suspect. So, the circumstances of death can be illustrated by various views of the body. Take close-up shots of the wounds, bruises, weapon use, and the body, and the place where it was taken. So, pipicture mo lahat yan. To, photographing the corpse. Corpse, ito yung biktima or ito yung bangkay na. So, in photographing the corpse of the scene, several pictures of the conditions at the times very including the environment of the corpse must be taken from various photographic directions. Ito yung dahilan kung bakit kahit patay na siya, hindi pa rin siya ginagalaw. Kasi po, kailangan mo nalang i-document yan. Kailangan mo nalang i-pictures. Kasi kapag tinanggal nila sa pagkamatay niya, lalo na kung merong something fishy na homicide dyan or murder, ang mangyayari, eh, pag inalis na agad yung katawan niya na hindi pa na-photograph, eh, wala na, nasira na yung evidence mo. So, bago mo alisin ng isang bangkay, okay, make sure na napicturean mo muna yung pinaka-location niya or paano siya nahiga dyan, paano siya nadapa dyan. 
ano, paano siya natagpuan. Kailangan siyang picturean. Unless kapag ang biktima niyo is nagahago, nagaagaw buhay, kanwari, uh, kailangan niyang dalhin sa ospital, mabubuhay pa. Yun, kahit hindi niyo agad picturean, dalhin niyo na sa ospital, okay na okay po. Yan, next. Sex offense examination. What if sa mga rape cases? Ganyan. So, the crime of rape may be taken as typical type of offense. There must be a written permission from the victim and the photograph must be taken in the presence of their parents or guardians or medical legal officer. Medyo sensitive kasi ito. So, hindi lahat naman na mga biktima ng ating mga sex offense ay eh, agad-agad pinipicturan. Siyempre, kailangan with the consent of the victim and with the Parents. Hindi nila isa sa publiko yan kasi nga uh, private crimes yan. So, the indication of the victim effort to resist as bruises or block and blow marks and evidence of the presence of either or both parties at the same must be photographed. So, ang pinipicture mo sa dyan yung mga bugbog niya. Ayan. So, naman, kung yung kanina we're talking about dun sa patay, how about the victim? Oh. Evidence of resistance of the criminal acts or particular importance in sex offense verify the hair yan kapag uh, yung mga ano ng mga yung mga ni rape uh, yung mga rape slay case yan verify the hair neck including marks and discoloration of the body in the genital okay yung mga genital parts the conditions of specifically affected parts and presence of foreign hair importante kasi yan lalo na rape eh fibers. Pag sinabing foreign hair, hindi taga-ibang bansa yung hair, ha? or taga-ibang bansa yung may-ari na. Pag sinabing foreign hair, hindi sa kanya yung buhok na yon. Okay? Fibers and biological stains. Bite mark. Ayan. Kasi minsan, kinakagat sila eh. Bite mark wounds should be photographed at 12 to 24 hours intervals for the preceding several days. Ayan. Next. The suspect, yan. The suspect body may show evidence of physical struggle. Ano yan, ma'am? Kanwari, yung mga kalmot. Yan. Such as scratches or bruises and foreign hairs that may be discovered by the physician. The garment of the suspect may reveal blood stains, semen, hair strands, and etc. So, ganun nyo sila pinipicturan. Eto na. Okay. Let's go now with the procedures in photographing the crime scene. Ito na talaga siya. So, number one, you need to start taking photographs of the crime scene as soon as possible with case identifier. Ma'am, ano yung case identifier? Nung talas, hindi naman po namin ginawa yun. Kasi nga po, hindi pa po formal. So, what is case identifier? Case identifier is a printed paper attached in plate bearing of provincial, city, or satellite office code, case number Photographer's initials and date of the crime scene processing. This is designed in order to establish an additional fax reference of the crime scene and that must be appeared on the photographs. Ano po yun, ma'am? Ito yun. Ayan, di ba? Pwede nyo namang, uh, eto, for example, oh, ito yung office nyo, CSI. Tapos, pangalawang, ano na to? Pangalawang, or of, division yung 0 to. Tapos, yung 2019, eh, pang number na yan ng cases nyo. Number case mo na, 2019 na. O, pwede yung gawain 143, ganyan, 148. Depende kung pang ilang case. So, dun sa mismong, uh, dun sa mismong gagawin nyo yan, kayo nang bahalang mag-invento. Okay? Then, the date, kung kailan siya nangrare, itong RAV, pwede ito yung ating initial. So, for example, ako, kung kanwari, ako yung mag-photograph. Kung ang pangalan ko is Katrina Aguilus Gamboa, therefore, ang magiging uh, initials dito is K, A, at saka G. So, ayan. Saan po ba nilalagay yan, ma'am? Eto. Tignan nyo. Ito yung pinaka-general view ng isang uh, crime scene. Ayan, sa pinakalabas. Kailangan merong nakasabit na puting ganyan. Ayan. Ang tawag natin dyan is case identifier. Ma'am, bakit kailangan ng case identifier? Para alam ng photographer kung saan nagsimula yung uh, napicturean niyang uh, crime scene. Kasi di ba minsan isang camera lang ginagamit nila, tapos tuloy-tuloy silang magpo-photograph. O what if meron siyang magkasunod na crime scene na pinuntahan? Baka na-mix na, na niya yung pictures niya kapag wala yan. So, lagi tayong may case identifier. Usually, another thing pala, yung case identifier, Uh, kapag pupunta na tayo sa loob ng crime scene, kung saan nakalagay lahat ng evidences, ilalagay mo din yan. 
Okay, so dalawang copy ang gagawin nyo dyan. Isa sa labas, pati dun sa pinakaloob mo ng pinaka-crime scene mo. Yan. So, that is case identifier. So, sabi niya nga dito, start taking photographs of the crime scene as soon as possible with case identifier. Yan. Huwag niyong kakalimutan muna yan. Next. Observe the progression of general, medium, and close views of the scene. So, sabi ko nga sa inyo, mag start kayo sa pinakalabas. So, take the photographs of the evidence. Sit, sit to first. See to it first without case identifier, evidence number and scale if necessary prior to collection. Ayan. So, pagkapasok nyo kasi sa loob ng ano, di ba sabi ko sa inyo, kayo yung mauuna, kayo din ang huli. Okay. So, pagkarating na, pagkarating nyo pa lang, picturean nyo na yan with case identifier. Pero, wala pa yung mga evidence number, wala pa yung scales. So, pipicturean mo lang buo. Ayan. After nun, lalabas ka. After mo lababas, ayan, uh, kasama mo na ngayon yung mga investigator, yung sketcher, pati yung uh, pinaka-head ng team, or yung pinaka-team leader ng SOCO nyo, or yung pinaka-investigator nyo. So, mangyayari nun, di ba, pinicture mo ng una, walang case number, ganyan. Pagpapasok na kayo, ayan, kung, sila, kung after nilang i-mark, ayan, dun mo pinipicturean. So, yung una, wala mo ng ano, wala mo ng mga, unang pictures mo, wala mo ng evidence number, wala mo ng sukat-sukat. Kapag kasama mo na yung dalawa, okay, yung sketcher at yung pinaka-investigator, doon mo palang ilalagay or pipicturean na meron ng evidence number at saka mga measurement. Yan, di ba? Before collecting, yan. So, photo evidence number, ito yan. Diba? These are used in the crime scene. Photographs to indicate where each piece of evidence is found usually. Two photographs are taken of each scene. One with photo evidence number and one with without. Yan. Sabi nga sa inyo, isang merong na number, evidence number, isang walang evidence number. Ah, may explain ko sa inyo doon sa May 3D para ma-discuss ko ng maayos. Yan. Forensic photography skills. Lagi yan kasama. Okay? So, this provide a geometrical reference in the photographic documentation of evidence. So, lahat ng evidences natin nilalagyan nila ng pang sukat. Next. Yan. So, take the photographs from eye level. When visible, to present scene as would be observed by normal view. Apply overlapping photographs when it's publishing the general view. And record every photograph taken. Yan. So, ano yung sequential? So, sequential photographs of the crime scene. Each crime has an individual features that should be photographed. Keep in mind that the nature of the offense and try to show those features that establish the elements of the offense. Depende kasi sa crime na meron kayo. Yan. Number one, huwag yung kakalimutan. Photographs should be taken off views of the exteriors. Sabi ko sa labas muna of the building. The vehicle, kung meron sa labas. With relations to other buildings, vehicles, roads, and streets. Sa labas. After mong napicture doon sa labas, papasok ka niyan. Your points of entry, outside and inside. Your points of exit, inside and outside. Next, Conditions of the crime scene. Kung anong nakita mo, sira-sira ba siya? Sira, um, gulo-gulo ba siya? Maayos ba siya? Iti-take mo ng photograph yun. Area from which valuable articles were removed. Ayan. Ito ha, bago nila kuhanin, kanwari, barel. Bago nila kuhanin yan, kanwari, napicturean na siya ng merong crime scene, ay, photo, uh, photographic evidence number plus yung uh, mga sukatan or measurement. Bago nila kuhanin yung mismong weapon, uh, dodrawingan mo nila yan ng chalk, idrawing nila yung pinaka-shape nun, kung baril yan. Para nga ma-establish na yun ang location niya. Ayan. Tool marks and impression of shoes or tar trucks. Ayan, lag ka kalimutan. Fingerprints and footprints as well as articles on which these prints may be found. Ayan. So, three types of range photographs. Alam nyo na to, pahapyawan ko na lang. General view or long range view. Okay, general view or long range view. Ito, anong pinaka ginagawa niya? To photograph overall scene fundamentally. Taken to portray the areas as if person viewing the scene, seeing it from standing position. Yun nga yung tinatawag kong landmark. Anong pinaka, ano nito? The purpose of general view is to focus and establish the location of the crime scene to fix point of reference serving as its permanent citation. So, fix point of reference means those unmovable objects in the crime scene like tree, building, electric post. Mamaya papakita ko sa inyo. Medium view or mid-range view. Ito nga yung 
Uh, photographs taken in a manner which portrays the scene from approximately 10 to 20 feet of distance from the subject matter. In order that the viewer may be permitted to associate the crime scene with separate areas of the scene photograph, this area should contain sufficient detail to permit the viewer with this association. Ano ang pinaka-trabaho ni medium view or mid-range view? This is designed in order to concentrate on the features of the offense which includes the full body shot of the victim and the other group of evidences. Diba? Pinapakita natin dito yung mga groups of evidences. And close-up view. Ito na. Ito ang pinag-usapan natin yung mismong specific evidence. So close-up view or close-up range photographs are normally taken approximately 5 feet or less from the subject. So the attention of close-up photography is directed to objects which could not effectively be seen in the general view or medium view photographs. So this angle center on the result of the crime through taking the half-body shot of the victim having a wound or damage or yung mga personal evidences kanwari isang barrel, isang kutsilyo, yung basag na baso, yun ang close-up view or close-up range. Okay. So, now, i-discuss ko nyo sa inyo ang kung paano siya i-photograph uh, by the use of this 3D. Okay, ito. This is just a simulation. So, for example, ito. Kanwari, ha? Ito yung ating place. Just for example, Okay, dali lang ha. Ayan. So, for example, ito yung place natin. Ayan. Ayan yung place natin. Okay. So, for an example, yan ang ating place. Now, paano tayo mag-i-start mag-photograph, ma'am? Okay. Di ba ang sabi niya sa atin, magsisimula tayo sa labas. Okay, magsisimula niyan tayo dito. Yan, magsisimula tayo dito. Okay, so we will uh, start with this one. Maghahanap kayo ng pinaka landmark natin, which is ito. Ayan, kanwari may puno po sa labas ng bahay. So, dyan tayo mag start Ayan, maghahanap ka ng landmark. So, ano bang sinasabi natin sa rules? Ang rules natin, kailangan kapag nag-photograph tayo, kayo yung unang papasok. Pero, ano yung pinaka-roll? Bago tayo mag-start, nakikita nyo yung police line do the cross, ilalagay nyo na dyan yung inyong case identifier. So, number one, you will take a general view. Paano tayo take yung general view? Ayan. So, pakikita mo yan. Magtitik ka ng overlap. Paano yung overlap, ma'am? So, mag-start ka dito. Ayan. Kailangan, okay, ito yung pinaka-una mo. Ayan, sa paharap. Tapos, kailangan meron ka dito sa gilid. Ayan. Tinukuhanan mo din yung mga kalapit niyang bagay or lugar kung saan papunta to. Tapos, after nun, yung sa gitna naman. Ayan. And then, ipapakita mo susunod is yung dito sa banda, sa right side naman. Ayan. Para nalalaman natin kung saan ta mismo located yung inyong crime scene. So, meron na dito nakalagay na, ano ha? Meron nakalagay na dito yung case identifier. So, ano unang-unang gagawin? After nyo ginawa ang general view, ayan, papasok na kayo nyan. Ayan, papasok na kayo. So, una nyo papasukan is itong ating uh, tinatawag na entrance and exit. So, pag-aaralan nyo yan. So, picturean entrance and exit. After nun, assuming na nakapasok ka na, okay, ilalagyan bagad ng evidence number, the answer is no. So, anong gagawin mo? Ayan, kanwari ito na yung ating crime scene. Ayan. So, bago kasi kayo pumasok dyan, so magtatanong ka sa mga investigator na kasama mo, sa team leader at saka yung sa sketcher, kung anong type of evi ev evidence method or parang, uh, tawag dito, uh, investigation method ang gag gagamitin nyo. It's either uh, spiral ba? Diba? Meron ba tayong grid? Double grid ba? Diba pinag-aralan natin yan sa CDI, CRDI 211, yung Fundamentals of Investigations, the different ways on how to uh, investigate a crime scene. So, kadalasan kapag indoor type, tapos box lang na ganyan, ang ginagamit nila is a spiral method. So, paano yung spiral method? So, paikot siya, magsisibula ka dito, nalagyan ko ng pen ha, so, kanwari, magsisimula uh, ka dito, Ang simula ka dyan, papunta sa gitna. So, ganyan. Paikot, paikot, paikot. Yan. Spiral. Paikot, 
paikot, tsaka paikot, hanggang sa pinakagitna. Yun ang ating spiral. Okay? Yan. So, ganun ang spiral. So, kadalasan ganun ang gagawin nila niyan. Spiral. Ngayon, uh, as a photographer, so nakapasok ka na, na picture mo entrance and exit. So, gagawin mo kung spiral yan, paikot niyan. Magsimula ka mag-photograph dito. Yan. Dito. Kailangan ba lagi ng photo evidence number? Hindi pa. Lalagyan ng sukat? Hindi pa. Kasi ikaw muna yung unang papasok. So, ayan. Bago mo iikutan yan, kailangan establish mo muna yung buo. Kailangan mapicture mo siyang buo. So, kadalasan pupunta yan sa gilid, sa mga corners ng room. Para makitang buo. Tapos, akit sila ng konti. Akit sila ng konti. ba diba? Kasi ano to eh, uh, mataas. So, dito sila niyan banda. And then, pipicture nilang buo. Ayan. Para makita nilang buo yung ating crime scene. So, after no, ang magigyari, ayan. So, magpipicture ka na spiral. Yan. So, after mo mag-spiral, lalabas ka niyan ulit. Yan. Yun ang steps, ha? Lalabas ka niyan ulit. But by this time, pagkapasok mo, kasama mo na yung mga investigator na leader at saka yung inyong sketch uh, or yung mga pagtagakuha ng evidences. So, dito yan. So, tatlo kayo normally. So, bawat lakaran nyo nun, okay? For example, dito mauna dahil spiral yan. So, bawat nakita nyo, footprint. Lalagyan nyo ng ano, lalagyan nyo ng pinaka, ayan, footprint. Lalagyan nyo ng uh, evidence number, tapos sukat, tapos pipicturan. Ganun siya. O, papasok ka niyan dito. Paikot siya, paikot siya ng paikot hanggang sa makapunta ka sa pinakagitna. Ganun ang spiral. Okay? Depende sa method na gagawin nyo. Pwede rin naman nag-grid kung gusto yung paganyan. Pwede naman po yun. Ay, pwede rin double grid. After mong mag-horizontal, mag-vertical ka. Ayan, para malaka yung nalalampasan na ebidensya. Ngayon, so, photograph, lagyan ng evidence number, lagyan ng, uh, yung tinuro ko sa inyo, evidence number, pati yung scale. Okay, after nun, kanwari, assuming na na lahat na, nalagyan nyo na ng evidence number, at saka, uh, tawag dito, at saka uh, measuring device. So, yan, nalagyan na. Ang gagawin mo as a police photographer, Okay, ang gagawin mo, hahanap ka ng view. Okay, for example, ito ang pinakamagandang view na makikita dapat lahat yan. For example, ito yung evidence 1, evidence 2, evidence 3, evidence 4, tapos ito yung pinaka letter A, yung, yung victim. Okay, maghahanap ka ng view wherein makikita sa isang picture yung lahat ng mga evidences or yung tatawag nating medium view. Ayan, yung victim, tapos yung group of evidences. Nakalagay yung mga evidence number. Also, don't forget, okay? Also, don't forget, di napicturean nyo na. Napicturean mo na na merong evidence number. Ang susunod kasing gagawin niya ng mga investigator, pati ikaw, i-collect na nila. Diba? After nilang napicturean, nasukatan, yan, paikot na ganyan, so, pukuha na nila yung mga evidences. So, bago nila kuha yung mga evidences, anong gagawin nyo? Yan, kanwari itong footprint. Itong footprint na to, bago kuhanin yan or imulage, kailangan picturean, tapos lalagyan nila ng drawing. To drawingan nila. Kasi, ibig sabihin, kapag na-drawingan na, maiwan na lang yung evidence number, alam nila kung ano yung nandoon. Kung analis man siya. So, to drawingan nila, minsan chalk. Yan, to drawingan nila yan. Pati yung tao, yung shape ng tao, kung paano yung pagkadapa niya, to drawingan nila yan. Okay, babakatin nila ano yung shape para alam nila kung saan yung pinaka-location ng isang evidence. So, after noon, after nilang na-drawingan, nakuha na nila yung evidences, nakuha nila, na, na, na safe keep na nila yung mga evidences, anong gagawin mo? Wala nang laman ng crime scene, ikaw ulit, babalik ka dito sa medium view mo, pipicturean mo with the evidence number lang. So, sila, paalis na sila noon. Siyempre, ku, ku, nakuha nila yung mga evidences. So, ikaw, may iwan ka dyan at uh, pipicturean mo ulit kahit wala na yung evidences. Okay? Picturean mo din itong mga exit. Ayan. So, ganun ang ating EV, ang ating crime scene photography. Madali lang siya kung madali lang kung titignan mo. Okay? So, nagkakaroon lang ng special techniques. Kanwari, blood. O, nakita sila ng fingerprint. Kaya siya nahihirapan. So, ganun lang ang proseso. Again, magsisimula ka sa labas with case identifier. ba? Tapos, establish nyo yung general view plus yung mga, ayan, overlapping evidence, yung ating overlapping location, ayan, para ma-establish yung pinaka-location ng ating 
crime scene. Tapos, papasok with the entrance. Ayan. Una, ikaw ang papasok. Wala mo ng evidence tamper. Pangalawa, papasok na kasama yung investigator team. Tapos, meron na yung sukat at saka yung mga evidence tamper. After nun, pupunta ka dito. Hahanap ka ng isang pinakamagandang view para makuha lahat ng evidence tamper, yung medium view. After nun, dodrawingan nila at pwede nilang i-collect. So, after nilang na-collect, ipicturean mo ulit na meron lang evidence tamper pero wala na yung mismong ebidensya. Yan. So, ganun lang po ang ating crime scene photography. Okay? Naiintindihan nyo ba? Ganun lang po siya kadala. Kung meron kayong tanong about the procedure na ganito, ganyan, you can ask me anytime. Okay? Okay, just another reminder. Nakalimutan ko hindi kasi yata kanina. So, dito, di ba, kapag pupunta ka na dito sa kanwari, pinakagilid, na di ba, hanap tayo ng pinakamagandang view para mapicturean silang buo lahat ng evidence mo. So, kanwari, nandito ako sa gilid. Di ba, sabi ko sa inyo, meron siyang evidence number, tapos meron na rin sukat, okay? Pag pipicturean nyo siyang buo, kailangan nakalagay din yung case identifier dito, okay? Para malaman mo anong kaso yon So, yung case identifier mo sa harap, dapat may duplicate ka, ilalagay mo siya dito sa loob. Ayan. Okay po tayo doon. Ganun lang siya. So, madali lang naman yan. Kayang-kaya nyo. So, sa activity nyo, kasi gagawa kayo ng video ng step-by-step -step procedures on how to uh, photograph a crime scene. Yan. So, gawa kayo ng magandang uh, crime scene na kompleto sana sa evidences. Merong fingerprints, merong victim, merong mga tool marks, ganyan. Gawa kayo. The more unique na nakita kong uh, photograph uh, crime scene nyo, the more na mas mataas ang grade nyo. So, ang video nyo kasi, i-explain nyo kung paano mag-take ng photograph. You also, yung video na yun, uh, merong nakapost sa canvas nyo sa course unit 15 para maging example nyo. Okay? Ginawa rin to ng ibang college. Eh. Okay? So, yun lang. Okay. Okay, for your no activity number 20, so, ang gagawin nyo dito sa range photographs, di ba, meron ako yung crime scene. Pagsasamasam, simple yung activity number 20. Pagsasamasamahin nyo from that crime scene yung general view or long range view, medium, or, medium view or mid range view, yung close up view and close up range view, plus yung merong extreme close up view doon sa mismong crime scene nyo. Pagsasamasamahin nyo. Regardless yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng photograph, wala akong ano doon. Ang gusto ko lang is ma-distinguish nyo ang pinagkaiba ng general, medium to close up at saka extreme close up view. Okay? Ganun lang kadali ang ating love activity number 20. So, yung photos na gagamitin nyo dito kapag pernasas nyo yung mismo yung inyong crime scene. Next! Sa love activity number 21, ito medyo mahirap na. Okay? So, mag start kayo dun sa pinakauna. Dito na i-document yung pinaka-step-by-step -step procedure na kailangan in-explain nyo doon sa video. So, every photo kasi dito, meron tong ganto. Ayan. Nakita nyo to? Description, time, date, place, soko reference number, yung nakita dun sa case identification number. Incident, what type of incident? Ganwari, murder ba yan? Homicide ba yan? Type of camera, anong ginamit mong camera? Your shutter speed, your ISO, yung aperture. Kailangan talaga manual camera ang gamitin nyo. Yung settings ng phone nyo. Yung weather condition, it's either windy ba? Uh, ambient light ba? Uh, dal, dal sunlight ba? Diba, pinag-usapan natin yung different sunlight. Yung photographer, yung pangalan nyo mismo. At kung gumamit ba kayo ng flash or hindi. Yan. So, each photograph po ba, ma'am? Yes. So, ang mangyayari, dito niyan, magsimula dun sa general view sa labas, so, meron siyang ganto. So, kayo nang bahalang magcopy-paste, hindi ko na siya dinamihan, okay? Per photo, nakalagay isang box, tapos description. Madami po niyan yan. So, ikakopy-paste nyo lang ito para ulit-ulit nyo lang. And then, next, so, kung kanwari, naka-20 photographs kayo dun sa isang crime scene, ayan. Ilalagay nyo siya dito. Ayan. So, ito yung SOCO form number. Do, gawa-gawa lang yung ibang info dyan. Nilagyan ko na ng ganto. Okay? Nilagyan ko ng frame number, aperture, shutter speed. Uh, para kasi yung mga records mo dito, ililipat mo lang siya dito. So, kanwari, yan. Binigyan ko yung example. Pero, dapat i-delete nyo yan, ha? I-delete nyo po yung mga nakalagay dyan. Kasi, example lang yan. Para lang meron kayong... Uh, 
Tawag dito, meron kayong reference sa gagawin nyo. Ayan, no? Pati yung camera use, lens use, print paper, date and time, flash unit, developed by, location, ayan. Photographer, incident, officer and case, requesting party, time started, ayan. Tapos, dito sa photographer, kayo yan, syempre. Tapos, itong uh, certified and correct by, at saka noted by, panatalihin yung Pedro Mercedes lang, saka Juan de la Cruz. And syempre, yung sa pinakababa niya, meron lang siyang nakalagay na your uploaded video link. Do sa your uploaded video link, ilalagay niyo doon yung pinaka uh, video niyo na in-upload sa YouTube or kung saan mang uh, social media apps na pwedeng paglagyan ng video niyo. Again, uulitin ko lang, each picture po merong ganto. Okay, tapos kapag sa pagsasama-samahin mo na, eto na 'yan. So kunwari, dagdagan niyo na lang ng table 'yan kung kunwari 20 naka 20 pictures kayo, dagdagan niyo na lang po 'yan. Okay po, pwede namang maging 2 pages 'yan. Yan. So, mag start kayo sa pinakalabas, katulad ng diniscuss ko kanina. Yun lang. From the general view, the overlapping view of the general view, hanggang sa pinakamalit details ng ating evidences. Ngayon, kung meron kayong tanong about your activities, uh, you can message me right away doon sa ating GC. Also, two weeks naman yan. Kaya ako ginawang two weeks kasi nga po, ganyan kahirap yung paglalagay ng documentation sa ating crime scene photography. So, good luck to you!